And <laughs> welcome to another episode of Just Two Dads with my co-host and partner, Mr. Sean Francis. I am Brian Altunian. And today, a special day, a week of gratitude and giving of thanks. Uh, we're going to have a, a lively discussion, lively conversation about those things that uh, that make us grateful and uh, happy to be alive here on Just Two Dads. Awesome. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all. I think we just I finally got this working on. Uh, we got these working on our individual Facebook pages as well as Facebook Live on Just Two Dads. So we welcome you if you are joining us on Facebook. Um, hello. Please make sure to comment on the um, uh, in the comment section, and uh, we'll throw those comments up. We're going to have a hopefully have a, have an engaged conversation. If you are uh, catching us after the fact on our YouTube channel at We Are Just Two Dads, we want to welcome you all uh, again. And if you want to subscribe, um, share with your friends, please do add, add to our subscription list. That would be awesome. Uh, maybe you're catching us on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or Pandora, iHeartRadio, uh, Spotify, wherever podcasts are. We welcome you and um, would love to have your engagement. Uh, as well at some point with our YouTube page or our Facebook page. And if you're listening to us on WSDXAM radio in the U.S. Virgin Islands, welcome. Welcome to our family. So uh, today, uh, we do not have a guest today. So Sean and I decided to, but we didn't decide to do this because we didn't have a guest. We didn't have a guest because we decided to have a conversation about gratitude and uh, and the giving of thanks uh, this uh, special week. Uh, we generally don't put a date on these episodes but there are some some weeks that we just like this is the week of thanksgiving 2021 coming to the end of the year end of a of a still in the pandemic cycle and um looking forward to kicking off a new year here shortly so without further ado uh welcome everybody without further ado so i want to say hello to my 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 partner in thrive and my my colleague my friend my family mr sean francis how are you today sean um i'm thinking about my words and the fact that I say the same thing all the time, but man, I'm just really, really grateful. I find myself especially grateful um, this Thanksgiving. Some of that has to do with um, um, age and wisdom because I'm even thankful for my challenges, which I, I, I used to feel like that was a thing that was, you know, a good thing to say. Um, but I, I truly appreciate the blessing that comes uh, with them, you know, um, much like the, much like the muscle, the spirit doesn't get any stronger without resistance. So I appreciate that. And then I've actually got great things to actually be thankful for. This platform, our friendship um, happens to be one of them. And um, sure. um, so that's uh, that, that that's where I'm at on, on this on this day. Looking forward to tomorrow and not to get political, but I know there are some people out there that because of the way that the holiday even came to be, they're not uh, that crazy about it. Um, I found myself um, really making it a concentrated effort to make every day Thanksgiving of some kind in some way, shape or form. And, uh, I don't think we discussed this last year, but sort of how, um, Thanksgiving affects, uh, special needs families. And so mm. the question is how do, how do families that have members of special needs celebrate Thanksgiving? Well, the truth of the end of the matter is, I mean, we could probably end the show here, which is just like everybody else because everybody's <laughs> people. <laughs> Yeah, but it's not without its challenges, especially when we talk about sensitivities to foods, uh, social anxiety and travel and things like that. I saw a meme the other day that I think I told you about where <laughs> it was a picture of a biscuit in somebody's hand and it looked like it was store bought, too, which I think was the point. It says, oh, well, time to spend the next two days in the kitchen just so the kids can eat this. <laughs> Hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't the biggest challenge, right? You know, when it comes to making Thanksgiving dinner, some people relish the idea of making Thanksgiving dinner. Spend, you know, weeks prepping the menu. They spend, you know, days actually making and baking and cooking and everything. And then, you know, we wait until three or four in the afternoon, and then <laughs> it's gone in a minute, right? And then you're like, all of a sudden, you yeah. have the kitchen, a dirty kitchen, and a ton of dishes, and you're like. Man, that was a lot of prep for you know an instant Five minutes. consumption. Yeah, massive yeah. consumption. But uh, 
Um, I, I love Thanksgiving. I, you know, family traditions are always, um, uh, you know, I, I think prevalent during these, this time of year, we used to have a thing and, and then we'll get into the, the main topic, but we used to have a, a, a holiday tradition. First of all, I worked for my dad in my dad's grocery store and Thanksgiving day, we were back in the day. This is a quite a, quite a long time ago. Um, mm -hmm. we were the only store open on Thanksgiving day. The only grocery store open on Thanksgiving Day, and in fact, oh, because other his competition probably wasn't open back then. Yeah. Right, right. Back in the day, you know, the 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 main grocery chains were not open on Thanksgiving Day, and so, uh, but we were open 365 days a year. We we never closed um, on any particular day. Obviously, we had hours, but we would go down to the to the to the big grocery store down with these massive signs that said, you know, our store's open, you know, and give the address and a, you know, a big arrow pointing the, <laughs> the direction of, of the, of the grocery store. And we were, it was packed. And so we got into the grocery store early since I worked for my dad and he was a family business, right? We got in at like six 30 or seven in the morning on Thanksgiving day. And then we worked all day and at some point around noon or so, my mom would bring, you know, some cooked stuff and we would put it in the pack and we'd go in there and, you know, scarf down food, but mm. it was packed all the time. Then we would leave there and go to my aunt's. And that was where the family tradition, you know, kind of kicked in for us. My cousins all played, you know, played football in the park in the morning, you know, came in all sweaty, got all changed. And then we had this massive, and it was on my dad's side of the family, so the Armenian side of the family. So it was a mm -hmm. massive food fest. If you've ever been to an Armenian event where food is involved, there's a the prep meal. They call it meza, you know, where the food mm -hmm. is laid out ahead of time which you could eat and live on for days, but they were like, Hey, right. don't, don't overstuff yourself. Cause we got a big meal coming. And then, and then the big meal would come after the layout of, of food. So it was a, it was a, it was a food feast. It was truly a festival. Um, and we got to spend time with, you know, with, with our family. And we did that every year. We went out to, out to my, out to my aunts um, really until they got to, you know, up in age and eventually uh, both my aunt and uncle uh, passed away. And that tradition never got carried on. At our hmm. level, which is a bummer, right? I think you know. You haven't seen that in years, then. It, we ha it has been it has been several years since we've done that, and uh, and it's unfortunate because I I keep thinking about wanting to reestablish some sort of, you know, some sort of tradition with my family. Of course, my children are spread out now, and I've got you know one in Israel, I've got one in living in upstate New York, and mm -hmm. you know only one here here with me, and and he's like I don't really care about Thanksgiving. <laughs> so and his mom doesn't really. <laughs> his mom's like, yeah, if I don't ever have to cook uh, Thanksgiving meal again, I'll I'll be okay with that. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so unfortunately that tradition has 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 uh, has passed along with my aunt and uncle, which is sad. Which is sad. But let's talk about. You know, so those traditions are are up because it's such a great it's such a great memory. It's such a great I I, I can't eat Thanksgiving dinner without having flashbacks of those, uh, you yeah. know, of, of those times and, and and all. And and you know, some people travel and some people have family over to their home. What do you guys do? How how do you guys celebrate Thanksgiving in your in your home? And let's talk well, we, about let's talk about some of the stuff that's happened in the past. Because I do know about some of the stories that you've had in the past. Oh, yeah. I think that's yeah. fun stories to tell. <laughs> yeah, well, we um, we usually we've done you know a couple of year, years where we have like my mom and my stepdad, you know, and my brother and and everything, you know, over. And now we seem to kind of sort of you know do our own thing, um, you know, as far as the dinner goes. But we still we still find time to get together. Like I'll probably dash it over over to my mom's uh, today and or tomorrow to pop in. I have uh, my aunt and uncle are in town um from vegas so i'm gonna make sure that i you know uh, go see them um because the time with each other is is really the thing that you cherish more than anything else but sure. um when you think of like our first thanksgiving especially as a family you know uh post elijah's you know diagnosis uh we were living in in burbank and we had that first thanksgiving that we were in that house we had uh, I don't remember how many people we had over, but quite a bit. And we hadn't stopped to, to think he generally would do well with people. You know, the whole social thing with autism. Um, the biggest problem is that when he would meet people, especially if he took to someone, he wanted to hug them and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it wasn't a lot of social aversion or resisting affection or anything like that. But everything has always been on his terms. Very determined, like, yes, I, like, I want to hug. You know, I like you or just keep your distance. I don't really like you. And so, but when it came to an influx of people, which was the first Thanksgiving that he could sort of 
observe and remember, he welcomed everyone in. Um, but as far as he was concerned, you know, after five minutes, they had stayed long enough. So <laughs> each person, he'd be like, bye, bye, like time to go, grab them by the hand, walk them to the door, open the door and get ready to like shove them out the door. Oh my God. Hilarious. You know? How old and was he at this time? At this point? I think he was, uh, how old was he? Maybe four or five, something like oh, that. Gosh. You know, hello. And you said that you've stayed long enough. Goodbye. Hello. Thank yeah, you for coming. You know, time to go. And he eventually, you know, graduated to the, you know, come out of his room and, you know, kind of say hello. But in between that, it was the come out of his room, regardless of what he was wearing or not wearing, and be like, hello, I am here. <laughs> so there's that too. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and then at my mom's, what he would do is he, he would, you know, we if we went over there, for a gathering, whether it was Christmas, Thanksgiving, or whatever, he would want to make sure that every light was on, and that took some getting used to for them. So oh, he's going sure. through every room and making sure that he flips on every light, and like, do not turn the light off, like as though like it's in a sci-fi movie or something, like as though the aliens will come and destroy Earth if you turn off the light. He like, do not turn off the light. Isn't that the interesting? Light, the light will stay on. We're like, okay. <laughs> You know, and so that took some, you know, some getting used you to it. Imitate him like he's a like he's a computer. The light will stay on. Do not turn off light. Because it's that's hilarious. kind of how he how he speaks, even like in the third person. And and that's a whole nother discussion where you talk about your growth and your development. You're used to it. And what we think of is as long as I can understand my child, what difference does it make? But <laughs> I caught myself, you know, only of in the past couple of months kind of redirecting him a little to make sure that he's understand understood in a little bit more of a universal manner because we talk about preparing for the time when we exist in our children's um memory as opposed to you know in fact when we're no longer here and at, at that point in time just like it's important to put financial plans together which we do for a living it's also to put them in a position to do that and you're so used to doing certain things and so He'll say things, he speaks of himself in the third person. And it's funny how things are processed, you know, so some on the spectrum are completely, you know, nonverbal, some might not speak well. And his challenge is the order in which things uh, come. And when he's speaking of himself, he speaks of himself in the third person. You say, Elijah will turn on the light. And I like, and only recently have I caught myself saying, just who'll do it? You'll do it. No, I'll do it. You know, making sure that it's. Yeah universally you know understand not that he's not understood if he speaks of himself in the third person but you know just another man way to sure. sort of up the game in terms of you know e equipping him but that's how he'll 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 do that you know when he's in a very jovial mood it's less robotic per se but he, it's it's very you know yeah specific and focused like i picked him up at school the other day and he was telling everybody bye and he likes to tell them one by one the teachers wow. and the aides and it, as he does that it it's not necessarily robotic but it's dead serious he was like elijah is saying bye you will have a good day have a good evening drive safe so and so blah 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 you know just in, and the, the pointing it. of the finger and everything you know he's just very um very <laughs> serious about what he has to say Listen, for for uh, for folks uh, listening in, last weekend I had the opportunity to go to to the Francis homestead and got a chance to spend some time with the family. And the funniest part, first of all, per, first of all, he asked me for my middle name so that he could refer to me as my full name, full and complete name, with my middle name, yes. which I yes, which I appreciated. But the when I was leaving, the whole you know opening the doors of my car, it was almost like what you were talking about before, like escorting me to my vehicle and then you know slamming the doors shut. So I, oh, that was the other thing too. Laura kept telling go. me to make sure make sure that you tell tell him how how how, how sorry I am that that you know they slammed the door. Oh, it was so funny. He was like, and you were like, don't slam the door. Um, but he was like, get out. Like, thanks, thanks for coming. Leave now. Goodbye. Get out in the car and go. But uh, but uh, he was. It's been such a such a, a a a pleasure to be around, and uh, and he got all dressed up in his suit to go do his daily errands, which I which I, I totally got a chance to see firsthand, and and I love that, and that's that you know sort of you know a a, a rep sort of a, a repetitious behavior, but something where there's where there's control over the you know mm -hmm. over the activities yeah. of the day, and that was mm -hmm. uh, it was it was it was great to see, and my gosh, he has gotten so tall. 
He cut his own hair. Talk about that yes. a little bit. He cut his own hair. Yeah. Yeah. He went through, um, he kept saying that he wanted a haircut and it's funny. Now we can get into a whole bunch of different conversations. I, I don't think like we've each thought of him knowing who he is, um, you know, from like a racial standpoint, you know, um, yeah. I don't think we've gone. I don't think we've gone out of our way to say this is who you are, this is who other people are, or whatever. But he he sees and observes things, right? And he, I don't know where it came from. He just started asking because what 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 he's what's happened throughout his life is my wife Laura would you know with scissors kind of trim his hair you know every now and then, right? And she got to a point where she'd get him to sit still for that and. Eventually, he just started asking. He says, uh, "Elijah will get a haircut. Elijah will go to the barber shop." I'm like, "I'm gonna go to the barber shop." Okay, all right. So this is different socially. I gotta find a barber that's a little patient and everything. And yeah. so then he says, "I said, well, let's look at some pictures." And I think the page said, you know, um, black haircuts or hairstyles or something like that. So he's looking at. It, he goes, "Elijah will go to the black barber shop and get a haircut," <laughs> and, he, and he picks out the picture that he wants. And the, oh, the, the haircut, and it's a mohawk, right? Kind of faux hawk because it's cut short on the sides and then you yeah. know, there's tuft on the top. Yeah. And I said, well, you know, I don't know if I can do that because I cut my own hair. I, you know, use clippers, right? And I keep it so close that I don't even use the guard. But I figured I could, you know, line him up and that kind of thing. So I did that. And that was one thing. He let me do that. Then I had some little clippers just for the, the face because he's got sideburns coming in now. So I kind of took care of that and, you know, and that was the end of that. But next thing we know, he's like spending time in the bathroom with the door closed and not really wanting anybody in there. And you're like, what is he doing? So that takes place. And it turns out what he's doing in there gradually, gradually is he's got the scissors and he's cutting the hair himself. So the wow. faux hawk that he has right now, he is the one that cut that and maintains it. And it is per the image that he chose out on that picture. I love that. That's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, yeah. He looked great. And now he knows my complete name. And I think that's how he's going to refer to me from, from this point forward. Um, he does you that. have, yeah. you have, um, besides Elijah, you've got six, six other, other children that you, uh, mm -hmm. that you take care of. Um, mm -hmm. How does your, Thanksgiving tradition within your family, forgetting the external folks right now, but within your household, are there certain things that you do? Do you like, you know, do a certain thing at a certain time every year or how does, so that's one question. What, one set of, let me, I'm, I'm not going to be Sean Francis. I'm going to ask multiple chess questions at once. So that's one okay. is what do you, what do you guys do for your day? And then, and then two is last year was the, was really first pandemic. So like no outside people generally were visiting a lot in, in mm -hmm. our, at least in, in our state. Um, yeah. And this year's it's the first, you know, post pandemic, if people are vaccinated, there's, where there's, where there, where gatherings are happening again. And it, is that something that's, that's, that's going to change for you this year relative to that year? So that's sort of, sort of two, two sets of questions there. Well, as far as what we do each year, we generally just, you know, um, I was the mac and cheese guy for <laughs> a long time, even when my wife and I were like dating. That was my thing because, yeah. you know, I love it and I got pretty good at it thanks to my stepdad. Um, and that sort of become a cross between myself and or um, my uh, oldest, uh, my youngest uh, stepdaughter. Um, but I'm going to be handling that, you know, this year. And what we would generally do is we just, you know, uh, like last year, I think we did like Cornish hens and it was fairly, you know, simple. I don't even know if we did turkey. I, I'm not, I don't remember. Gosh. Wow. I think we did that in like a, like a, a, a chicken, a turkey breast or something like that. Um, uh, you know, so last year was pretty quiet. This year uh, we'll have my youngest daughter. I think her, her boyfriend's coming over. And, um, you know, um, even my, um, you know, my mother-in-law and not a whole lot of, um, uh, of people, but you know, I'm on Mac and cheese duty. And what usually happens, it's funny because Elijah has the usual things that he eats. So I'm curious as to what other parents go through. Well, what does um, he, what does he eat that he, that he, that he prefers? Well, generally he prefers, he'll, he'll have like, um, uh, a burger, right. Um, from okay. like 
someplace, you know, fast food of some kind. And that's a whole nother struggle because we know that he'll eat that, but we kind of want to take that away from him. He'll have that. And then he'll usually eat like a, a, a sub sandwich. Um, you know, uh, and what he has is we're not getting paid for this, but he eats a uh, Jersey Mike's and he eats an, uh, an Italian. So we know that gentleman that owned uh, one of the locations in Burbank and got to know him from going in there on a regular basis. And what Elijah would do is, because I'd go in there to get, grab something and maybe, you know, uh, take all the kids. And he eventually, you know, you know, would just get, I would just have him give me like a small piece of bread mm. and they'd be like, nothing on it. They're like, no. Cause at that point, you know, his protein wasn't coming from any kind of meats or anything like that. And eventually there was cheese on it. And one day, and or no, it was just, just Turkey. Now one day they put provolone on it by accident. And so what he would have is just a, you know, a plain Turkey and provolone, um, sandwich because when he has a burger, it's only the patty on the bun, nothing else. And one day Laura happened to have an Italian sandwich, which is, you know, you know, what is it? Capicola, yeah. salami, sure, uh, meats, the meats, Italian and then, dressing, right. and uh, right. yeah, and the oil and vinegar and you know, onions and everything. And he tore it up. We we're like, what? You know, I had no idea. So that is his sandwich of choice. So he'll usually have that. And then maybe some uh, some pizza crust in the morning. You'll have um, uh, buttermilk pancakes and um, and so uh, and blueberries. No traditional. He won't not like not a traditional uh, Thanksgiving meal. He won't eat traditional Thanksgiving. He keeps food saying each year when we ask about that that he's going to because he's going through a thing right now. Uh, and to his his teacher, um, um, I know I'm going to leave other people out, but to. Um, Aaron Barrich and um, uh, and 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 Nicole Noop, who are the teacher and one of the aides at, in, in his class, they have him. You know where they'll do not only a weekly you know field trip, but they'll they'll come back because there's a kitchen in the classroom because it's life skills. So they come back to the classroom and they'll prepare a meal of some kind, and he'll try almost anything which he didn't do before. So we're mm. thinking that this year might be a little different when we ask Maybe him, Hey, are you going to, are you going to try a little bit of this, a little bit of that? And, you know, and even if he doesn't like it, he'll at least try it. Whereas once upon a time, you'd still kind of look at something and go, no, I do not. Want uh, it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's you so know? funny. I have a, uh, I'm going to post, put this up here because family traditions are, are, are awesome. And we'll talk, get back to the future in a second, but mm -hmm. Sean all shared. Mr. Gather is a big family. Our tradition was basketball. It was initiation for the new boyfriends of the cousins. It got pretty brutal. <laughs> That's hilarious. I think that my cousins had done the same thing with football, although I was working, so I never got to play in that football game. But I think what went from a from touch or flag football became a tackle, tackle game pretty easily. Yeah, pretty quickly. And they all played football in high school too. So I have a feeling that that was kind of brutal. So yeah, I can see that. That's a, you know, throwing the football around. Uh, you know, the weather holds up. Well, we're in Southern California, so the weather is always fairly nice on Thanksgiving, maybe a little chilly late afternoon. But but uh, I think, I don't know, today we've got almost 80 degree weather here. And that's nothing, I'm sure, compared to what Sean Hall has out there in Hawaii, which is gorgeous weather um, almost year round. But um, uh, so that's fun, fun traditions based on, you know, kind of what, what's happening and, and getting the family together. It's always a good thing to kind of initiate new blood as you will people who are visiting or participating um in thanksgiving oh you want to come to dinner yeah we have a huge spread first you got to play some tackle football so you know we're going to make you wide receiver <laughs> that's kind of fun I, I i like that portion of it <laughs> that's funny that's yeah, funny yeah. so um so all right so so traditional here we put take, take that. thank you thank you sean for that anybody else that wants to kind of share with us uh, traditions that you have during during uh thanksgiving uh Please do. I'm always fascinated by what, yeah. by what traditions. And then, and then if you're a special needs parent, you know, challenges and some of the solutions yes. that, that, that you might have, because one thing we haven't enjoyed is, you know, at least in, in only a minor way is to sit down as an entire family and, in, and Elijah's included. Cause what he will generally do is he he'll come to the table as everybody gathers. He likes to say grace. Everybody will hold hands. He'll say grace. He'll nice. lead it, say it a mile a minute. And then boom, he's gone. And then back up to his room, you know, wow. and, and will then he take he, food. Nope. 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 He has nope. not. He has not. I mean, maybe this year might be, you know, a little different. Now it's funny though. If we go out someplace to eat and we're all sitting down, that's a little different than he's engaged there, but at home, he's just kind of, you know, kind of does his own thing. Yeah. 
Interesting. Interesting. And, and yeah, I think it would be, it would be good. I know that um, our, our friend, Sus Susanna Lavelle, I, I know she told me she took her daughter, uh, Arizona to, um, to Ohio where her family is. And so they're doing a whole big gathering. Um, they had recently gone through a transition. They moved into a new, a new home. There's some other things that were kind of happening. And so, mm -hmm. tr and transition was difficult for, um, you know, for, for the, for her family and now taking Arizona to Ohio, where she's you know going to be inundated with all of her cousins and, uh, and again, Susanna's adult, adult siblings as well. So I'm sure that we're going to hear some stories about, uh, about that as well. But I, I already know that the travel is always, it's always interesting to travel with a child with, with, with special needs and you have to come uh, loaded Prepare. down with a bunch of, yeah, a bunch of things just to help to ease the change and ease the transition. And not for every child, but for, for many who, who deal with sometimes it's a, sens it's a sensory issue, um, the change in altitude that affects, you know, affects our ears and, and all of that stuff and, and, and keeping them active and busy. So um, traveling is difficult. I know traveling can be difficult. And, and then and then throw on that and talk about extra sensory, um, you know, stimulus from having a lot of people, which is why I was going to point about gatherings this year as, as people are. Um, I, I had a friend who had just moved into a new house. He has family flying in from all over the country. They're going to have 22 people in their home. Wow. Which is a lot of people right it's and not 22 of... people for the meal 22 people that are staying for like the holiday or staying for the holiday not all staying at the house but a bunch of them are staying at the house a couple of them are staying at a local you know at a, at a, at a local hotel but 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 for the weekend for the next today yeah. and into the next four or five days a bunch of people from all over all over so um you know even for neurotypical children that's a lot of stimulus oh yeah that's a See, lot like of... we've we've done you know, road trips of some kind, you know, with Elijah, especially when he was a little younger. Yeah. And, but then when we did that, um, we went to a, you know, a family gathering in, um, in, uh, out in Las Vegas. And that was before, that was before we adopted my sister-in-law's kid. So it was only, um, me, Laura, um, uh, my two stepdaughters and Elijah. So it was just, it was just us. Yeah. We have yet to put him on a plane. We keep saying that we're going to take a trip to San Francisco or something like that, which is, you know, what, an hour flight or something like that. Yeah, very, um, very short from here. Little, so he just, he's not just, traveled on a plane? Before? He has not traveled on a plane. And so then, so when my grandmother passed away in the Virgin Island, I was torn between, first of all, I was torn between going to see her before she passed and taking him with me um, versus making sure I was at, her sure. funeral, sure. which I eventually traveled to, you know, alone. And I'm still not sure if I ended up doing the right thing um, because I, I don't know. I feel like I, you know, I, I had to be there to say goodbye, but it, in retrospect, I kind of wish I got him on the plane and, and went so she could see him as well. Cause she never got a chance uh, to meet him. And, mm, interesting. you know, and he, and he was, he was young enough where, who else is going to be a handful? Like I, I, I don't know about either one of us, Laura or myself, traveling with him. Just one of us. I figured it would really need to be like a, you know, a, a tag team. But you know, as as is part of the human condition, I probably complicated that. Um, you know, uh, more so than it than it needed to be. But we've we we've had discussion about that because we haven't you know done that before. And with with him, you ask him certain things, unless it's something that he's thought of. If it's not his idea, his first response is no, I do not, I do not want to do that, or I don't want to do that. He'll just say no. And what you have to do is just, oh, we're doing so and so. And you just go do it. And he's pleasantly surprised. If you do that with a plane ride, that might be the case. Or it could go south in the other direction where we're on the news. I don't know. <laughs> sure, sure. Well you never, you know, yeah, that's a challenge. And I and I think even for, again for people who are, are neuro, neurotypical, sometimes the fear of flying, or you know, we allow our own you know cognitive you know limitations to to sometimes impact how we experience flying. Some people live their entire lives and never want to get on a plane. You know, that's an, yeah. that's that, that's what. So, um, but it, it's it, that's interesting. It's not like you can like you know buy tickets and then. And they get to the airport and then and or get on the plane and then get, have, you know, have them go, oh, yep, I'm not doing this and then get off. I mean, that could be a very expensive proposition uh, right. if that's a challenge. And then 
Unfortunately, we have seen in the news over the last, you know, during the pandemic and during this time where, um, during this time when there, when there have been some challenges with, with, you know, people fighting the restrictions of, you know, wearing masks and stuff and, and how they've been dealt with, um, we have seen in the news a few, a few incidents where, um, you know, children with special needs issues or folks with special needs issues have been treated a little more harshly because there was no communication that that person had a sensory, you know, a, a sensory overload issue or, or whatever they were dealing with at the time. And so right. you're, to your point, definitely don't want to be a, don't want to be in the news for, you know, for behavior that, you know, maybe, maybe a challenge and an internal challenge. I don't know how you would get him used to uh, doing that. That would be, would be, fat. it would be, it would be amazing if he got, if that was something that he could, that he would embrace and actually want to do because then, then you travel. I know, you know, the, one of the airlines, I think it was, I want to say American. I, I don't know. It was a, a known airline. One of the kids that was in he, uh, in Elijah's class, um, the, uh, I remember the mom uh, telling me that her son was part of a program that took place at, um, I don't think it was Burbank. I think it was at LAX, uh, LA International Airport, where the airline would allow the child to, you know, you'd get on the plane and the plane would taxi at the very least. I think because of you know you're just talking about taxiing on the run, taxiing on the runway. I don't think he would have a problem with something like that, you know. And so that's something that's a whole another topic altogether, and something worth um, looking into, and maybe even sharing you know on the show uh, in the future. Because I'm sure there's things out there that we may not know of, or there's a great need to be filled. Yeah, and it would be fascinating to hear other families who have you know either you know overcome that hurdle. Um, and you know how, what they did to cross over to have some, some, some success with their, with their children, um, traveling by plane, um, sometimes traveling by boat or, uh, and obviously of getting in the car and doing a, doing a, a, a car drive to a destination is, is, is a little, is a little bit different. Really fascinating to hear that. I don't know how we, how we, how we slipped into the travel, but I think it's because people travel generally for the holidays. Well, it's, you know, the whole started. planes, trains, and automobiles, it's, it's, right? it's, it's, part of the experience yeah has he done a train have you guys done a train he has not and that's the other thing when you ask him that he says no but the way he feels about like when i would chaperone on the school bus trips the way he loves to sit and look up the window i already know that he would love a train now that's something where we'd have to just say here's what we're doing and you go and get on it and then and I know, By the way, I, i'd be surprised if he didn't like it and, and you can show you can start short to, i remember when blake was was young blake's now 14 um he used to love taking just like the metro train Right, because it was mm -hmm. just getting out, and we would. I remember we were we we had taken him down to San Diego for Comic Con, and as that time, and he used to wake up at like five o'clock in the morning. I'm like, oh, how am I do with this kid at five in the morning? We would right. get on the train and just and just go on the train for a, you know half hour one way and half hour another way, and he loved it, and he has loved train travel ever since. And so you could start short with Metro, and you know take a little longer train, and I, I will tell say traveling by train is a blast. It is it a, is. a it is. great way. It ages, but it is. Not restricted. You can get up and walk around. You have your own little little place. You can interact. You can look out the window. It's, it is a fun, definitely a fun, a fun way to travel. So, but yeah, I'm curious yeah. to hear how other people, how other people travel. You know, with their with their families, especially when they're when they have some you know children who have, you know, some sort of special need or some issue that they need to you know to be prepared for. So that's that's mm -hmm. interesting. Um, uh, and so. And so we were talking about traditions. So we, we've sort of talked talked through that a little bit. And and I love Sean's commentary on, you know, again on on getting on gathering people for sports activities. His his final comment on that was no blood, no foul. Um, <laughs> hey, listen, are you not bleeding? That wasn't a foul. I totally agree with that, Sean. By the way, um, and if you're bleeding, if it's like a little drop of blood as opposed to pouring, it's not the same thing either. Um, that is <laughs> that aside. Um, let's talk about gratitude gratitude and 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 again you i always i always introduce the show and you know welcome everybody and go through the whole set of, you know talking about everything and then i would say sean how are you and your and your comment always is i'm blessed and grateful or some combination of those those words and so i know that you that you live your life in that state of constant um, gratitude um and you and i have had many many conversations on and off the Just Two Dads platform. Um, and just for the folks that that may not know this, Sean and I started doing this podcast because we would talk about these kinds of things and we were 
just two dads chatting about, you know, things that made our, you know, were important to us in our, in our lives. And so I know how that, how you live your life, but, you know, for everybody, maybe people who have, haven't really caught, you know, many episodes or sh share with people, give us your, you know, sort of your, your, your state of mind. And, and again, for those who may not know, Sean is extremely philosophical in his, it is a conversation, just in day-to-day -day conversation. I'm always <laughs> amazed by, by some of the, some of the, the things that, that you say, which I think about it after the fact, I'm like, Oh, that was pretty, uh, that was, yeah, that was, that's pretty mean, that's pretty deep. Um, but, but just your, your constant state of, of, of gratitude and, 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 and where you are, you want to share with that a little, share with that. Well, little. my, um, my, my dad and my, and, and his mom in particular played a great role in instilling those things in me, you know, as did, um, my mother well, when I was a kid. Um, but my life has been, I've been so, 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 so blessed. Much of the struggle that I have um, endured in my life, because everyone's life has struggled, has been self-induced, you know, um, and to be, you know, really um, transparent, you know, I didn't, I wasn't wealthy growing up, but I didn't really want for anything. My family had businesses that were started by my grandfather who didn't even complete high school. And uh, looking back on it, my my dad had the real struggle of trying to balance, you know, giving your children fish versus teaching them to fish. And if you ask him, he'd probably tell me that he probably gave me a little more fish than he would like to. Mm -hmm. um, and so as a result, I've developed, you know, this thing where I want to make sure that I'm catching as much fish as I can and trying to pass that on to the kids as opposed to giving them because you that's the first thing you want to do. But I'm saying all that to say that as a result, it can become very easy to take for granted the fish that you have. Um, yeah. And so as a result, I'm always trying to fight, you know, not to do that. Because, for instance, when you're driving on, on the street, driving through a neighborhood and you see someone homeless in the corner um, and you, you know, maybe you give that person some money or maybe buy them a meal or something like that. When you go home, depending on your perspective and from where or whence you come, you know, that determines how soon you're going to walk in your door and shift from, man, reflecting on that experience to, whew, this is going to be good it, to your own meal and your own warmth and your own everything, you know? So yeah. um, I, I work to do that all the time because you can still kind of, you know, sort of uh, forget, you know, as you know, for a handful of years, what we would do is take a handful of people from, you know, our firm. And I, I was blessed to sort of lead the charge doing this because I saw other people do it where we would gather each Christmas morning, go down to Skid Row after having gathered, you know, food and clothing items for, um, you know, weeks prior and take it down there and give it out. And I remember the effect that it had on me when I went the first year. And then the next year I took some of my kids with me and the way that kind of, you know, hit them. And they'll never forget that. Yeah. But that's not something that stays with you. So I, I think it's um, it stays with you, but it it rests within you as opposed to resonating up front. So I think to make the best use out of your time on the planet, to pay for you know your rent for your room in heaven, which is by providing service to others, the gratitude and the trying to be child like and not childish always being curious about somebody else's shoes and what it's like to that has to be a constant work i don't think anybody just you know is naturally you know um, of such consciousness that they're above what they have and always thinking of other other people that that's work and i don't want to ever rest weary of, of of that so um the rest weary of that get weary of that i should say um um because it's just too easy to forget. And to be honest with you, if I have every financial um, goal and dream come true tomorrow, it is one of the things where I seek to intensify that battle because at that point, it's easy, you know, to kind of forget, you know, if we're, I know this is a long answer, but, you know, I, I for a while, when I chased a career in, in, in music, and I don't even know if I chased it, I scampered after it, so to speak, but I lived in Minneapolis 
um, you know, for a while, for 10 years and had an opportunity to work on a couple of Prince projects, meet some great people and stuff like that. You know, there are portions there of my life living on my own in my first apartment where I was on some food stamps and, oh. you know, and I would make sure that I was at the grocery store cashing those things in late at night when nobody else was around. And, uh, I would go to my, to the, to the, to kitchen and to the kitchen and look at the cupboard open it up and when it when it was full and sit in the middle of the kitchen and just give thanks and those things aren't so far behind me that i forget and yep. if i'm a billionaire next week i don't want that to ever change and that i just think that's a work in progress i don't think you're just For naturally sure. there well it's it's interesting that you say that cuz i always you know i always think about this when when i have either you know folks that that work with me or even or even my own family my children you know if there's a if there's a moment of complaint, if you will, there's some, you know, oh, this is, I always get these fantastic calls from my daughter, Gabby, who loves to tell me about her, about how stressful her day is and everything's relative, right? And so for Gabby, mm -hmm. who's 22, this is a self-portrait right here behind me of Gabby. For those that can see on screen, that's Gabby blowing a bubble. That's what you do, blowing up a, a bubble. I like to give you just an example. She would say that this was stressful because her fear of that bubble exploding and then getting in her hair, right? To her, that would be a very stressful event. So other people would be like, are you kidding me? What are you, what are you talking about? She would call me and, and tell me these hilarious stories. I find them hilarious because again, it's all perspective. What was stressful for her, you know, I got to get back because, you know, I've got to call my teacher, but my roommate is picking up her skis for our ski trip this weekend. And we promised to go pick up the alcohol for Margarita Monday and we're going to be five minutes late. Like those are the things that stress her out, right? They make me laugh. But I would say to her, you know, besides once I stopped <laughs> laughing at the hilarity of it um, is, OK, well, cool. Stop for a second and give me three things that you're grateful for right now. And anytime somebody has been in that mode of like, oh, my God, this is like the world's crashing or, oh, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this or, oh, I'm really stressed out about this. If you can stop and say, give me three things that you're grateful for right now and not like, mm -hmm. no, don't give me the off the cuff uh, food in my refrigerator family and, you know, a job like what, no, but like really deep gratitude. It changes your perspective. It creates a shift. And I think that um, there you go, Sean, Sean, as Sean's posting there, right? An attitude of gratitude always keeps me in a state of happiness. I, I find and, and practice now every night before I go to bed three things that I'm grateful for that occurred during the day or just three things in general that I'm grateful for. And when I wake up in the morning, three things that I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for this relationship. I'm grateful for the work that, that we do because I see how it impacts people, right? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm grateful for the platform that this podcast, you know, provides us to reach out to a large number of folks in a community that is often marginalized or, or left or left behind. I'm grateful for so many of those you know, of those things, I, the list I found initially, it was difficult finding things to be grateful for. If you're not in practice, you can find that to be difficult. Now the list is so long of the things that I'm grateful for that I'm, I'm, I'm constantly in a state of gratitude. And to your point, it's like having a cupboard full of food, you know, at some, you know, you realize, oh my gosh, there were times when I didn't have food in my, in my cupboard and I stressed out about it. And now that I mm -hmm. do, I'm grateful and it's a, and it's a place of groundedness, right? Mm -hmm. To give you groundedness. Um, yeah. So that's, I mean, that's, that's good. That, that's what I do. And I, and I try to reinforce that anytime somebody's in that mode of like completely stressed out or the world's falling apart or my cat is sick or whatever it is, you know, yeah. what, are you, what are you grateful? What are you grateful for today? And how can you make sure that, you know, you're surrounded by one of the, one of the best practices that uh, one can do is to create a gratitude jar. And even that takes some work because the jar that I have, I don't even know if I bought it for that purpose. I think I did. And I think I might've seen it online. So it's a, you know, you take a jar and the one that I have is, if you can see my hands here, it's, you can't even see the body. It's pretty big. It's, it's more than a gallon, right? Wow. Okay. It's a good size jar. Um, and I have some saying I came up with that I type printed and taped on the jar. But the idea is that, Upon the jar, you know, you on a piece of paper, you write something that you're grateful for and you write the date, you just put it in the jar. And over time it accumulates. And when you're having a bad day, you refer back to that jar and you find something to reflect upon that brings you 
that brings you gratitude. What a great and idea. I, and, I, and I've even thought to, you know, sometimes I'm like, am I writing the same thing? Because without thinking about, yeah, I'm grateful for today. Okay, but are you really? Just get in the moment. And, but in addition to the gratitude jar, I actually have, oh gosh, now I can't find it. <laughs> um, I have a, it's a little box my daughter gave me. Um, and it has a bunch of things that I should be grateful for. Um, it just to check on whenever I feel down and it was given to me as she gave it to me for either, um, uh, Christmas or my birthday. I don't even remember uh, which one, but a state of gratitude, you know, a real true state of gratitude is it, that in itself is work. Anything worthwhile is, is work. So, um, because if you're just going through the practice of, yeah, I'm, I'm breathing. I'm thankful for that. Think about what it would really mean to like lose that. So when you think about everything is about perspective. So you, if you earn a million dollars a year, you know, to someone that earns 500,000, you're wealthy, right? So such and such is a big problem. So-and-so makes a lot of money. This is a horrible thing. This is a great thing. The, the question is always compared to what? Compared to what? Right. Compared to what? Always, yep. always, always, always. And so, you know, our biggest problems, our hugest nightmares, you know, that's somebody else's dream. Do you know? Sure. Always. You know, they said if you take a group of people and have them write down their biggest problem on a piece of paper, everybody throws it into a hat and you draw from the hat. If you get anybody else's problem but your own, you'll be begging for your own back. That's interesting. Yeah, for sure. Listen, to that, to that point, I think that First of all, whatever practice you can put in place to remind yourself of those things that you're grateful for. And once you get into practice, you, it's not that difficult to get into that because I, I consider that honestly to be to be like stage one. I mean, I think stage two is then, you know, reaching out to other people and expressing your gratitude for them or to them for something that they provide you. Yes. Because now you're expanded beyond, you know, your your body, your mind. And, um, and, and now you talk about, you know, how can you be grateful? Uh, and again, I, I, I use Sean Hall, you know, as an example and, uh, <laughs> Sean, Sean's talking about last week's podcast, wiping out all of his excuses in life. But, but uh, honestly, knowing, you know, what, what Sean goes through, um, just in day to, just in his, just in day-to-day -day life with his, with his family and, and, you know, in where he is in Hawaii. I'm grateful for I'm grateful for the work that Sean Hall does for us, not just for this podcast, but who he is for us. Talk about servant leadership. Mm -hmm. um, really, Sean Hall, I mean, you're, you're there on comment and commenting and, and watching. But we are both grateful for the work that you do, for the contribution that you make, uh, the look and the feel, the the linking to all of our social media and and, uh, and and really just the just the groundedness that you provide us. We're grateful for that. Um, I'm grateful for this platform, but I'm grateful for you, Sean Francis. I'm grateful for you, Sean Hall, for for being a partner with me and us in this work that that we do. Um, I think that stage two for folks in the world of giving thanks is is the things that you're grateful for that you have in your life and then telling other people and reminding other people. Sometimes it's the difference that it, it, it can make all the difference in the world to them. Maybe they're going through something that they're like, man, I'm not sure if I'm making a contribution. I'm not sure if I'm doing something. And then somebody calls them up and says, hey, just want you to know I'm grateful for who you are for me. I'm grateful for who you are in the world and who you represent for the world that my children are going to grow up in. So so that can make all the difference in the world. And then mm -hmm. beyond that, right, beyond thanking others is then you know, going out into the community and, and providing, you know, additional like you do, Sean, when you go down to the mission and, and, and give to the community. Now you're really expressing your gratitude um, by acts of service and acts of contribution to the community. Um, and yeah, Sean, Sean, there is pre appreciate both of you in the community I'm able to become part of because of our relationship. That's what it's all about. And as you go around the dinner table, on Thanksgiving, this was the other tradition. It's always good to share. I remember my kids were like, I'm thankful for my family. Like, okay, that's like, now that's <laughs> just trying to get to the next, like past, past the buck, but we're really yeah. get down to like, what are we grateful for? 
expression of, of gratitude on a regular basis. It doesn't have to be just during Thanksgiving. It doesn't have to be just during the holidays. Mm -hmm. The more we definitely is the, the better, you know, the world becomes because of it. Right. Yeah, most definitely. And I think that what you stated um, is so key in terms of letting other people know, because we, we end the show, I was talking about, you know, uh, people need to know that you matter and need, need to know that you see them. Need, they need to know that they're, that they're heard. When you think about those things, then, you know, a good thing to do. Yes. You'll sit around the table tomorrow. Hopefully if you have family that you're going to be with and say, I'm thankful for some, some of you will say, I'm thankful for, for my family. And you'll think of the first thing that comes to mind so that you can really just, you know, jam some food in your mouth. Right. Um, but think, stop and think about, you know, people in your life that, matter to you just like we always like to say you know what if you love someone let them know life is short let everybody know the same thing is applies if they make a, a difference in your life big or small especially if you can think of people that wouldn't expect it and people that have made uh an impact in the smallest way like for instance i'll give you an example at least i, I try to we had a um a, a microwave that was being installed yesterday and the guys were great uh, when they came to deliver it. They came to deliver it, and it was it's too big for the space. It's mm. not going to work. So it had to be taken back. So I, you know, contacted, um, you know, um, the store to make sure that in addition to the refund for the product, we were getting the refund for the um, uh, for the installation, right? Sure. And this is another example of just how things are going post pandemic. So, or, 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 you know, I'm talking to the, to the rep and as I'm talking to her, I, I hear like deet, deet, every couple of minutes in the background. And I already know exactly what it is. It's a smoke alarm. Um, oh. She needs to change the battery and she's working from home like many people. So, and she was just so helpful going out of her way and everything. And I said, um, what is your name again? And she told me, and uh, I said, um, I said, um, yeah, this might seem strange, but this is coming from a, you know, a place of love too. I said, do you have a family? She said, uh, yeah, yes, I do. I said, and I'm assuming you're working from home. She goes, uh, yeah. I said that chirping in the background there, your smoke alarm, make sure you change the battery so that you and that family that you love can be protected in case something nice. happens. Nice. And she started cracking up. She goes, I just didn't think anybody would hear that. I said, I'm surprised you didn't hear my dogs earlier when you were talking to me, <laughs> you know? And I said, it's unfortunate. And I know we're on a recorded line. They, you know, she couldn't get me what I needed, but she was going out of her way to try to do that. And I really appreciated the effort. And I really did think, you know, it's one of those things where she got used to it. So she hasn't changed it. Go change your scene. Make sure that you guys are taken care of. I hate for anything to happen that you weren't prepared for. Nice. And I think she truly deeply appreciated that. Nice. Sidebar. I've had several conversations with people. That's the second or third time though, that I've been talking to someone who's giving customer service that's working from home. And I hear the chirping in the background. And when I tell them, they're shocked that I hear it. I'm like, I know because mine has gone off like that too. Hilarious. Fix it. So you take care of yourself. Hilarious. Well, I, I have, I live in a, I live in a, in a loft and my ceilings are very high and I had a smoke alarm that I just couldn't get to because it was, and it was going and I was, it's, it's menacing. So I totally get it. So <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that they're very appreciative. Um, and um, as is usual for our, our podcast, our time together goes by so quickly. We, we were joking about it folks, just so you all know, um, before the show, we were kind of talking about some topics that we wanted to discuss. And I asked, you know, look, it's the day before Thanksgiving and, you know, it's, we can make it a short show. We can, you know, give yeah. everybody a break from our, you know, on, you know, our rambling. Um, and um, and we thought we were going to have kind of a shorter, um, shorter episode. But uh, people who know us uh, intimately uh, know that we do not uh, do anything in a very short increments. We, we tend to <laughs> ramble on incessantly. Anyways, that being said, that being said, as we do wrap wrap up the show, I, you know, again, thank uh, and everybody who's, you know, who's, come in who's watched some part of our episode who contributed who said put comments up there anybody else yeah go big or go home right sean um everybody else who's listening to us on our uh on our podcast platform thank you for for giving up a part of your day to hear us you know just share with you thoughts just just two dads here and uh if you're catching us on our youtube channel please subscribe and 
you know, share with your friends. Some some of the shows are more interesting than others. I think I find our shows that when, where we have guests and we're not just the only ones rambling. Last week's show with Billy Billy Price of Billy Footwear was an amazing um, was an amazing episode and one of the you know one of the many that we're just just we're just in love with. We, we're we're in love with our guests and the work that they do and the contributions that they make to the special needs community and you know the general community because they're doing just amazing fabulous work. Um, so we're grateful to all of you um, for the contribution that you give back to us. Um, and on that note, I will say, as I do every at the end of every show, you know, now more than ever, uh, empathy and love is what will make this world a better place. And so if you see somebody who has a situation that you may not understand, A, have some empathy first, because you may not know what they're going through. And B, if you look at the world through the lenses of love um, and look at everything from that perspective, the world will just be a better place. So empathy and love, share that with you, your family and friends, especially this week because of the holiday. You may not, maybe you're seeing people for the first time as a, in a gathering uh, in, in a year or a year and a half. Now's a good time to make sure that you let people know how much you appreciate them and how grateful you are for their relationship. And with that, I will throw it over to you, Sean, to close us out on this uh, episode of Just Two Dads. I want to... Um... As usual, um, I definitely off the top want to make sure that I thank uh, the women in my life, um, uh, my amazing uh, wife, Laura, and my mom, Jan. Without them, I, I couldn't begin to be who I even aspire to be. Um, but I want to thank my uh, my dad. I want to thank all my family, all my friends. I want to thank you, Brian. I want to thank everyone that's um, um, been listening from uh, day one. And I want to thank... Um, uh, the outlets and platforms where we're able to share our word. I want to thank uh, WSDX and the listeners in the U.S. Virgin Islands. I want to make sure that I thank uh, everyone wherever you get podcasts from Apple to Google, to, uh, Spotify, Stitcher, um, Amazon, every last one of them. And again, remember that somebody out there needs to know that uh, that you love them. They need to know that uh, they care. They need to know that um, the, that you care. They need to know that they're seen and heard. And again, if anyone has impacted your life in any way, great or small, reach out, take the time to let them know and give them thanks. And if you can, if you have a small, what seems like innocent and supposedly meaningless encounter with someone, especially between now and the rest of the year, make sure you let that person know if you appreciate what it is that they've done for you. Um, whether it's somebody that delivers your mail, uh, whatever people, you know, especially if someone gives good service and does good work and it's part of what they're expected to do that's often taken for granted. So make sure uh, that they know. And uh, to have everyone, happy Thanksgiving. And if you're watching us, wherever you might be, we love you. Thank you, everybody. See you again next week on Just Your Dads. Thanks again for sharing and for joining. Take care. <laughs>